Hi there! In this video, we will talk about how the nervous system coordinates and regulates feedback mechanisms to maintain homeostasis. So let's get started! The nervous system is your body's decision and communication center. The first division, the central nervous system, consists of the brain and the spinal cord, while the second division, the peripheral nervous system, involves all of the nerves. Together, they control every part of your daily life, from breathing and blinking to helping you memorize facts for a test. Nerves reach out from your brain to your face, ears, eyes, nose, and to the spinal cord, which connects to the rest of the body. The central nervous system receives and processes all of the information from all parts of the body. In other words, it controls the entire organ system of the body. The major parts of the central nervous system are the brain and the spinal cord. The brain is the control center of the nervous system. It is divided into three main regions, the cerebrum, cerebellum, and the brainstem. The spinal cord is about 40 to 50 centimeters long. It connects the brain and the body. Composing the nerve tissues of the cord is a gray and white matter. The spinal cord transmits impulses all over the body to and from the brain. It is also responsible for involuntary movements such as reflexes, like moving your hand away from a hot or sharp object. The peripheral nervous system contains all the nerves outside the brain and the spinal cord. It carries impulses from the sensory nerves to the central nervous system and from the central nervous system to the motor nerves. The peripheral nervous system is further divided into two more divisions, the somatic and autonomic nervous systems. The somatic nervous system regulates the activities that are under conscious control. It includes all the nerves controlling the muscular system and external sensory receptors which refer to the external sense organs, the eyes, ears, nose, skin, and tongue. The autonomic nervous system includes the motor neurons that control the internal organs. This means that the autonomic nervous system regulates all activities that are considered as involuntary or those reflexes that are done without conscious will. Some of its functions include controlling the muscles in the heart and the smooth muscles in the internal organs such as the intestines, bladder, and the uterus. The autonomic nervous system is further subdivided into the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems. The sympathetic nervous system is known as the fight or flight response, which controls the internal functions of the body in times of stress. In addition, it is responsible for the acceleration of heart rate, the constriction of blood vessels, and the rise of blood pressure. The parasympathetic nervous system is known as the rest and digest response, which is the opposite of the sympathetic nervous system. It controls the internal functions at rest. Thus, it slows down the heart rate and increases the intestinal and gland activities. The basic unit of the nervous system is the neuron or nerve cell, which carries impulses to the nervous system. A neuron is composed of the cell body, which contains the nucleus, and is covered by the myelin sheath with an axon terminal at its end. The Schwann cell is what produces the myelin sheet. A dendrite is called the receptor site of neurons as signals originate at its end. The dendrites receive the impulses and carry these toward the cell body, while the axon carries the impulses away from the cell body, which passes along the different parts of the neuron. The nodes of Ranvier allow the generation of a fast electrical impulse along the axon. Axons then pass the impulses to the dendrites of the other neuron cell body in the muscle cells. 
There are three classifications of neurons. First are the sensory or affective neurons. They carry impulses from the sense organs to the brain and spinal cord. Second are the motor or affective neurons. They carry impulses from the brain and spinal cord to the muscles. And lastly are the associative neurons. They are located in the central nervous system. They analyze and interpret the data or impulses. Ever wondered how a message is passed from a stimulus to get a response? As we have just learned, the nervous system is connected to the different organs of the body and the senses. These organs are composed of different receptors. Photoreceptors for the eyes, mechanoreceptors for the ears, olfactory receptors for the nose, chemoreceptors for the tongue, nociceptors on the skin for pain, and thermoreceptors for temperature. With these receptors, the nervous system gets all of the information on all things happening to and around the body. Once a stimulus, like when you accidentally touch a pot of boiling water, is detected through a receptor or a sensory organ like your skin, the sensory neuron carries the message to the central nervous system from one nerve cell to another. When the message is received by the central nervous system, it processes the information and sends an impulse through the motor neuron ordering the effector organ, which is a muscle or a gland, to respond to the message. In this situation, the muscle is ordered to move the hand away. As distinct as these functions are, it is still of high importance that these body parts function with balance and coordination with one another to maintain homeostasis. So what is homeostasis? Homeostasis is the condition wherein the human body system is maintained in balance despite the changing external factors. It is responsible in the regulation and maintenance of the internal environment of the body. It regulates body temperature, fluids, salts, acids, and gases, and nutrients that help support human life. The internal control system of the body responds immediately to change from the different conditions or external environment. There are different control systems in the body, namely sensors, control center, and communicating system. Sensors are receptors that are responsible in gathering information about the conditions inside and outside of the body. The human body is made up of sensory neurons that carry impulses to the brain or spinal cord. The nervous system and the endocrine system are the communicating systems of the body. They carry information to all parts of the body. Through nerve impulses and hormones, they dictate the target cell or organs in the body how to respond with the internal and external changes. Targets are any organ, tissue, or cell responsible for the changes in the activity of the body in response to the message received. The human body is made up of electrical signals or neurons that receive input, process the input, and produce a response. The control center of the body is the brain, which is a part of the nervous system. The brain receives information from the sensors. It then examines the information and compares these to the normal values in which the body functions well. If the information received is below or above the normal range, it quickly responds by sending messages through the communicating systems, the nervous system, and the endocrine system. For example, an average adult's normal heart rate is 60 to 100 beats per minute. If your heart rate will go below 60 beats per minute, your brain sends a message to the heart to beat faster so your body can function normally again. If the opposite happens, the brain sends a message to the heart so it can slow down. The negative feedback mechanism is a control system to reduce or minimize any internal or external changes of the body, which helps the whole body system to be stable. It is also a mechanism that regulates homeostasis. The term negative is a deviation from the set point or normal value. The set point 
refers to the ideal requirement of the body to maintain homeostasis. Let's take your body temperature as an example. The body's core temperature is 37 degrees Celsius. When it overheats, like what happens when you're exercising, the sensors send a message to the brain to regulate the heat, and this is why you sweat afterwards. The sweat decreases the body temperature back to its regular level. Negative feedback loops can control the body temperature. The positive feedback mechanism is a control system that uses information from sensors to increase the rate of processes. It is also the exact opposite of a negative feedback mechanism. This type of feedback is important whenever a rapid change is necessary. It deviates from a set point and it becomes greater, which makes a bad situation worse. This type of feedback is rarely found in healthy people. For instance, if you accidentally cut your hand, the positive feedback mechanism is used in the production of nerve impulses and increases the rate of blood clotting until the wound is sealed. When the body is not in homeostasis, organ failure or diseases could happen. The following are some common illnesses pertaining to mental health. First is anxiety, or the uncomfortable feeling of fear, uneasiness, or overthinking that something bad may happen. Second is panic disorder, or repeated episodes of sudden fear and feeling of great danger and impending doom. And also we have depression. This is a state of being sad, the loss of happiness, a lack of interest on things, wanting to be away from others, and loss of energy. It is not the normal sadness or grief that is manifested with low energy. Worldwide, many suffer from depression, especially during the time of the COVID-19 pandemic. Depressed people need to seek help or communicate with a loved one about their condition. Depression, if not addressed, may lead to the loss of many lives. So how do we keep our bodies and nervous system healthy? To keep your body and nervous system in good shape, strive to do the following on a daily basis. 1. Perform regular exercise. 2. Refrain from smoking. 3. Get plenty of rest. 4. Drink 8 to 10 glasses of water a day. And lastly, eat a well-balanced diet. So here's a quick recap. The nervous system is your body's decision and communication center. It is made up of the central and peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system is composed of the brain and spinal cord. The peripheral nervous system contains all the nerves outside the brain and the spinal cord. It is further classified as autonomic and somatic peripheral nervous system. The autonomic peripheral nervous system is also further classified into sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems. The negative feedback mechanism is a control system to reduce or minimize any changes or conditions of the body. On the other hand, the positive feedback mechanism is a control system that uses information from sensors to increase the rate of processes. That's all for now. We will be discussing about how protein is made using information from DNA in our next video, so stay tuned. See you on our next video, and don't forget to keep your minds busy! If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and hit the notification icon for more videos like this.